Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode of the Das Box Challenge, a really cool, interesting challenge full of surprises. We found CMD service and we are trying to break out of this protection of escape shell arg in order to run commands on the server. Let's get started. All right, so we were analyzing this line. I said in the previous uh, episode, by the way, all the episodes will be linked in the description box and the links will be available by the end of the week when the challenge is finished. So we have this line here. Let me just copy that. I'm going to play with it on a text editor. Zoom in a little bit. Now we know for a fact that escape shell arg will prevent us from evaluating multiple commands, but it, it doesn't prevent us from generating a string that will take benefit from this concatenation right here. So let's take uh, our string and try to evaluate it as the server would do. So the server would receive this string, um, this will be escaped. So the real value is this one. We will remove those strings. So this is what we are left with. And then we have a concatenation, right, to our input with escape shell arg. And then we have an escaped string, right? So what we can do here is construct a string that would look like this. Let me just copy this line and paste it here. So because we would have a concatenation right here, so this is the value that is controlled by our input. And inside, I can do something like a quote, right, to close this first double quote. And then I can do pretty much what I want, right? So that could be something like uh, ID. That could be sleep for maybe five seconds and then I can terminate with a sharp. Therefore, my payload that I can send in the arg could be this one right here. So let's copy it and uh, let's try it. I'm going to use burp so that I have more freedom and I can also see the time that is taken for the response to come back. So in goes our request. I'm going to right click on it, send it to the repeater. And then I'm just going to right click and change the request method because remember we need the arg parameter. And then we're going to just paste our payload here. And I'm going to uh, control U to encode it as URL so that it's uh, a valid HTTP request. And then I'm going to send it. Now it's taking some time, it's promising, but is it going to take five seconds? Now look at the bottom right corner, 5,000 milliseconds. Let's change that five to three and see what we get. Send. Now it's taking some time, but not much as the first one with exactly 3,020 millisecond, which means it's uh, about three seconds. So essentially what we've done here is that we've been able to run operating system commands without needing to bypass the escape shell arg. This is a blind situation, meaning that we don't have any output. So if I type ID, I'm sure that it's going to be executed server side, but we don't get anything in the response. So we need to learn how we can navigate our way into this machine, even though it's hardened. And really, the approach that we can follow here is a blind approach. I'm going to first try to see if I, if I can get a callback. I doubt it, but just to make, be sure, I'm going to create a collaborator listener, copy it to the clipboard, and then go back to the repeater. And here, let me just decode this for you. So in goes our command, um, that would be wget and then HTTP and then our collaborator. I'm going to take the entire thing and then uh, encode it and send it. 
Okay, do we get anything in our collaborator? Nothing. So we don't really know if wget exists as a binary or the firewall is blocking our requests. If only we could have a way to verify that using a blind approach. Now, any ideas? You can pause the video and think about it. Okay, I'm going to sleep for three seconds, but I'm going to take benefit from Shell's operators. And here specifically, I'm going to use uh, the end symbol. This means that if I run anything here and it succeeds, then and only then the sleep would happen. And so if there is an error here, the sleep wouldn't happen and it won't trigger a delay. Interesting, right? Let's give it a try. So if I type something that doesn't exist, like a command that I'm sure doesn't exist, let's send it, I get a response straight back. However, if I type ID and try to send that, it's going to take some time and more importantly, it's going to take exactly three seconds, as you can see in the bottom right corner. All right, we are progressing, but not quite a lot, but I'm happy with my progress so far. So now that we have the possibility to verify if a command has been run successfully, um, we can try something like wget-h. Um, if I run it locally, it's going to just uh, print the help menu. So if I type echo uh, dollar question mark, I get zero, meaning that the result of the previous command, in this case, wget dash h was successful. So let's uh, verify if we have wget in our server. And indeed we have it because the response takes exactly three seconds. Perfect. Now, if I try the same uh, command as before. I'm just going to copy once more my collaborator URL and put it right here. Okay, let's uh, send it. We get a response right away. So this means that potentially um, there's some kind of filtering going on here. And most probably it's because of this uh, hardening um, file based on IP tables that we saw in the previous episode. This one right here, hardening.sh. So the output gets dropped, uh, outbound connections get dropped, which are not already established. So that's a bummer. We can't get a reverse shell. I hope I'm not saying garbage here. If there is a sysadmin who is really fluent in IP tables and firewalls, correct me if I'm wrong. But from my understanding, the machine is heavily firewalled, so we can't get a reverse shell. We can't get a bind shell either, because if we run a bind shell, only port 22 and 80 are open. So we're blocked here. So, <laughs> you know, this is a really interesting challenge. Drop a comment below of uh, your ideas on how you could exploit this further to get a shell on the system. Uh, in the next uh, episode, we're going to explore some ways to do some enumeration and try figure out a way to get a foothold on the system that is comfortable, not lame like this one. If you want to learn more about the progress and learn more hacking techniques along the way, I suggest you subscribe to the channel and uh, give the video a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. And let's see you in the next video. As always, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.